Hello YouTube, it is Champion DJK coming at you again with another weekly episode. And uh, as usual, I've got some, some cool stuff to show you. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, we've got, I got one package from Japan, which contained this. Pretty cool, GTR. Uh, this is an oversteer. I've never had an oversteer in the collection before, so... Um, they had these on there for pretty cheap, and it looks really highly detailed. We're going to go ahead and get it out of the package in the second half of the video and take a closer look, uh, but definitely cool looking. Um, then we got this from Para 64, or Para 64. It is a Mitsubishi 3000 GT GTO. This thing actually looks real nice. So, PAR64 is new to the scene, I think. Um, it says it's licensed. It's made in uh, China uh, by J JD Toys. Not really sure on it. So, they're coming out with some new models lately. I had to check one of them out, so I decided to check out this one, this Mitsubishi. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll get that out in the uh the next half of the video uh and then along with these two as well i got uh, two tomica limited vintage vehicles uh that are very very awesome there's this one this is a dotson 200 sx custom roadster so we're gonna check that one out and then we've also got this one this nissan laurel uh 2000 gl-6 um, I got both of these because these were uh, really inexpensive. I, they're on sale. Every once in a while, Hobby Link Japan will have um, sales, and they have some pretty good deals. So these were actually real cheap. I think they were like under 15 bucks or something a piece. So not a bad deal. So I got that small package uh, from Japan. And then um, I got this. Found a good deal on this Ultra Red on eBay. So I picked this one up, so that's another one from this series off the list. We will uh, pop that open in the second segment, along with the two regular cars, so that we can look at uh, all three of those. So that will be cool. And then we've got three mystery models from Mystery Models Series 2 for 2020. Uh, I guess you'll have to wait to find out which ones I picked, but I got three of them. Um, yeah, there's not too many cool models in the series, and we'll talk about that in the second segment, but, uh, not a lot of cool ones in the, in this particular series. I picked up, well, whatever, we'll see. So there's that. And let's see, I grabbed this 5-pack with that, uh, 510 in it. I don't think I already had this thing. I hope I didn't. But, uh... I couldn't remember whether I had picked it up. I don't think I had picked this one up yet, so now I got it. So pretty cool. That 510 is a cool compl compliment to the 510 wagon that was done in a similar style. So I grabbed that. Um, and it's the older version of the tooling, it looks like, too. So that's cool. So this has a roll cage in it. Um, and then I found these two from a newer wave of Matchbox moving parts. We got the 2019 Ford Ranger and the 2018 uh, Range Rover Vogue SE. So we will check out these two as well coming up here. So we got a lot of cars to look at in the second segment. And then these ones here, I don't think I'm going to open because I don't know. I have to check and make sure that I don't already have uh, especially this E-Type Jag right here. I think I might already have this one in blue. But I also got it in, in yellow and green. If you watched my video that I posted yesterday which was random cars from Facebook uh, this was from that same Facebook group and uh, these were the carded cars that were in there. So three Jags a uh, Pontiac GTO Judge silver and this uh johnny lightning calendar cars gto so these might end up showing up in time cart tuesdays eventually yeah that's probably what's going to happen so 
we won't be looking at those in the next uh, segment of the video. But that's it. That's all I got. So, um, yeah, other than that, things are pretty good. Uh, Stay-at-home order is still in effect in my state and will be until the 20, I think the 25th of May. Uh, nice thing, though, is I got the next, like, nine days off of work here, sort of. Well, now it's, I'm down to, you know, seven. But anyway, so that's going to be good. I might get some stuff done in my diecast room, get some other stuff done around the house while I can. Won't be going, you know, really anywhere. But, uh, yep, we'll be a primary caretaker for both my children, though, throughout the week. So it's not like I really have a because <laughs> that's going to be busy. Uh, but, yeah. yeah, so should be pretty cool. All right, guys. Well, let's go ahead and just, without further ado, flip the camera around here to take a look at some of this cool stuff close up. So stay tuned. Okay, so let's start by taking a gander at this guy. So, Oversteer. Version 2.0. So I don't know if that's just like the second release of this particular car. Um, I haven't seen like Oversteers pop up too much lately. Um, I know they're known for being pretty highly de detailed, but uh, yeah, so this is the Nissan GTR Nismo 2014. There's some uh, information on the back there. Obviously, I cannot read it. Um, let's go ahead and uh, open it up. So it's packaged like a lot of uh, premium die cast is. It's got a little cardboard outer thing and then an acrylic case. And right off the bat, that looks real nice. Although, you know what? Right off the bat, man, you see that little roughness in this paint right here? That's what they call paint rash. I'm not sure when this car came out. I, I want to know. The, anyway, this was not expensive, just so you know. It was not. Um, I think, I don't know why I ended up, probably ended up coming across it on that website on Hobby Link Japan. But it looks to have some paint rash on it right out of the box. All right. So it is a static display for sure. It is not a roller. Definitely not a roller. The wheels look like they're a little too big, almost. Um, other than that, it's got some real detail. That's disappointing right there. That could probably easily buff out on the top there. It's just annoying that you'd have to deal with anything like that in a premium model. Um, the headlights look great. They look absolutely fantastic, actually. Those look really good. Um, the base is plastic. Not much detail on the base. Uh, the rear of the car appears to look really good. It's got the spoiler. The defogger. Back there on the, on the back window is pretty cool. Definitely not to scale, really, though, because those would be much thinner lines, I believe. Um, I don't know. It's not bad. Looks pretty good. Now, I've got some other premium uh, GTRs in my collection. Uh, this one is from Kyosho, so just so we can kind of compare maybe a little bit. So this is more of like a stock model, not like a Nismo package or whatever. Uh, both of these, you know, have their side mirrors and stuff, have, you know, all the details you would expect from a premium diecast brand. This one's in silver. No paint issues on this one. Metallic colors usually don't suffer from that, thankfully. Um, the back looks a little bit more detailed on this one, but again, it's a different version of the vehicle. But, I don't know, it looks pretty good. Kyosha looks pretty good. So I like that one. And then this one right here is a Tomica Limited Vintage Neo. And it's a similar version of the car. It's a different package, I think, but very similar. A 
both of these look pretty nice. I would say definitely the TLV gets the edge. Actually, they both, now I'm looking at them, they both have the uh, like uh, detailed interior, two-tone interior, the red seats. Uh, this one you can actually see, though, like the disc brakes. Actually, you can see it on both of them now that I'm looking at it. Sorry if you can hear that pounding. Uh, my kids are jumping around upstairs. <laughs> I don't know what they're doing. This one's a roller. Very good roller. Uh, the Kyosho rolls as well. Not quite as good. Get the plate up there. looks really good so yeah I would say the TLV I would say has the edge over the oversteer but uh, the oversteer is pretty decent all right moving on okay so next let's take a look at this para 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 64 or 60 yeah it's par 64 I think it's the name of the brand kind of cool packaging Nice colors and stuff. Caracas red. I don't know much about this brand. Like I said, they're pretty much new to the scene. Um, but let's check them out. So the acrylic is taped shut. And then the car, of course, is screwed down to the uh, acrylic. Let's go ahead and unscrew it. Oh, never mind. It's got one of these little neat twisty things, so that's cool. Uh, this is ooh, that's really neat. So this is actually just like um, uh, well, similar to anyway. Well, the thing fell apart though. <laughs> um, it's similar to Spark models. It's actually metal though, which is interesting. I think the Spark metal ones are plastic, but yeah. Anyway, that's a really cool concept. I like that quite a bit. I think that's an awesome way of packaging. It beats the screw for sure. So real nice. Uh, the bottom plate here, the so packaging people, looks like that. <coughs> Not bad. Um, all right, so let's take a look at the car. It's nice. It's pretty nice. Uh, does it roll? It sort of rolls. Uh, it looks pretty good. What do you guys think of this one? There's a little bit of sloppiness going on here with the inserted tail light on this side. It's a little bit off. Um, now I don't know if that is going to be. Oh, yeah, I could probably I could probably fix that. A little dab of glue, push this thing into where it's supposed to go and hold it. It'll probably stay. Again, it's annoying. You know, you don't want to have to, like, do some work on your cars as soon as you get them out of the package. But uh, sometimes you gotta. It's just par for the course. It seems like every brand suffers a little bit from quality control issues. Which is understandable, I suppose. But this back one here, or this one right here, I mean, that's just not even in there. I could pop that right out. It's, like, not even in there at all. See? I don't want to pull it all the way out, but yeah, that's going to have to get glued in. So that's an issue. Mirrors look good. They got a little reflective sticker on the side. One of them's not lined up 100% correct, but uh, decent. Um, yeah, I mean, overall look at the car. It looks pretty good. I don't think these are terribly expensive um, in, compar in comparison to some other premium brands i don't think these are very much or not too expensive i think they're gosh i don't remember see it takes so long to get stuff shipped from japan sometimes i forget how much it actually was and then but i think it was like 15 bucks maybe something like that maybe even a little bit cheaper but it's not bad it's a decent looking car i think they came out with this in green as well 
but I wanted it in red. I thought it was a more appropriate color for the car. So that's what I picked. Screwed together. You could take the thing completely apart, do whatever you need to do. I'm definitely going to have to... I got this, this one in perfect now, just by pushing it like that. This one, obviously, is going to have to be actually adhered, because it's not. It's literally like just pressure fit in there. But anyway, yeah, let me know what you think of this. What you think of this brand. Quality control issues aside, um, it'll be interesting to see what other cars they, they come out with. I think they've got some more stuff coming down the pipe already, so that's their first release as far as I know. Alright, uh, next let's take a peek at some Tomica Limited Vintage. We've got two of those. Uh, so let's go ahead and open those up. This is LVN157B. Nissan Laurel 2000GL-6. It's in this pretty cool color blue. The blue poly. No extra parts or pieces for this one. Which is great. Now we should see some really good quality control here. That's Tomica Limited Vintage for you. And they should have good quality control for how expensive their cars can be and yeah this one looks awesome just the detail you would expect suspension um, we got uh, metal base of course metal body wonderfully detailed clear glass or clear plastic for the windshield windows detailed interior the different color steering wheel there than the tan interior some other nice details in there. Wheels look great. You know, you may think this is a boring car, maybe. It doesn't really do anything for you. I get it. It's not a Lamborghini. <laughs> you know, it's not a GTR. Um, but it's just a little gem. And uh, I love it. I mean, I'll, I really, I'll take any TLV. I don't care what the car is at this point. If I don't have it in my collection, I wouldn't mind owning it. I'm not going to go out of, way, out of my way to try to get a ton of them. You know, I just pick out ones that I, you know, they're good deals or ones that I think are, will look cool here and there. Um, of course, this one's a roller as well. And it's just a beautiful little car, so that's cool. All right, next we've got this one. I was actually really excited for this Datsun 200SX convertible custom roadster LVN 161A in brown brown was a very popular color for cars in like the 80s I don't think it still is is it I don't really see too many brown cars maybe I'm just saying that I'm completely wrong but all right, so this one does have an extra piece. This also comes with this some literature here. Not sure, but there's that. And then here's the car. The car looks awesome. It's got a blue plate on it, which is interesting. Again, we got nice detailed taillights, beautifully detailed headlights as well. You can really see the interior on this one, of course, because it's convertible. Duh. And then, of course, it's got suspension, metal body, metal base, copyright dates 2017. That's probably when this car came out. And then um, we do have this little thing, which is the, uh, the rag top. And I think we're actually gonna we're gonna open this up because I want to. We should actually put it in, install it now. Proper way to adhere this is going to obviously be glue it. Um, I want to see how easily it just fits on here. It goes right there. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I could put it on there. Interesting how it's got some detail under there, even without it. You know, I may just display it with it sitting on there instead of gluing it. Uh, I 
it doesn't look bad with it off but I guess it does look a little bit goofy so it's kind of interesting how there's actual detail under there though I don't know I guess I'll, I'll decide that later but uh, probably going to just if I do display it with that on there I'll probably just leave it floating on there the only issue with that is then, you know, it might be easy to lose it if I forget that that's a separate piece and then I, you know, decide to go ahead and move it around and then it falls somewhere and yada, yada, yada. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, Auto World uh, 1958 Plymouth Belvedere. It's the same tooling as the Plymouth Fury casting from Christine. And here we got the Plymouth Belvedere and this beautiful tor torador torreader torreader i don't know i don't know how to pronounce it red so looks good i don't really know what the difference is between the fury and the belvedere Maybe I'll have to look at that sometime. This has got nice details, though. The steering wheel is a different color. Um, it's got a two-tone interior. I Yeah, that's a nice-looking car, for sure. Um, and then, of course, we got version B in misty green. Love the color on this one. It's misty green. Quite nice. Pop the hood on one of these. Uh, this one's sticky. Let's try this one. There we go. Oh, it came right open. There's the motor tooling. Uh, these both have the same plate. Alright, let's check out the Ultra Red. And here is the ultra red. Beautiful. Looks great. So the ultra reds in this series have ultra red bases. They have white interiors. And, um, of course, the Ultra Red body paint. They go off of the version A car as far as traits go. That's why this thing has a silver um, side stripe thing instead of white like it does on the, on the green one. Uh, out of all three, though, this is the most beautiful one, I think. The Ultra Red does look great, but, uh, but yeah. That minty green looks absolutely fantastic so big fan of that so awesome another ultra red off the list of my ever going conquest to try to get all of the auto world chase cars uh so next is matchbox moving parts so we've got this 2019 ford ranger skyjacker a little camo action going on it gets headlights. It gets Ranger on the back, but no taillight tampo on the back. It's interesting. Uh, I like the wheels. The pla they're plastic, but they look uh, pretty awesome on this. I think that's a newer Matchbox wheel. And then the hood opens on this one to reveal some engine detail. Works really well. Looks pretty good. Closes nice. Opens easily. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's not a car I'm terribly excited about, but uh, I'd say it's a pretty good one. Colors of like a flat silver, but it still looks pretty good. And then we get this one, the Range Rover. This one has an opening tailgate. I, you know, I like these Matchbox moving parts, and I get that they have to do this. I just really don't like the plastic piece in the back. They do a decent job of paint matching and stuff like that, making it look right, but the 
car itself looks really good. I mean, the front end looks good. The tampos look good. I like that it's black with the silver. It's got a sparkle paint job. And then you got... That's the moving part. And since it's black, it doesn't look too bad. But it definitely is a different shade. This one really... It's kind of tight, too. I'm trying to push that to get it to sit down correctly. There's a little bit of gap on top here. I don't know. It's okay. The moving parts don't excite me too much. I really would just rather have a nice, solid-looking model, but uh, I get it. It's something different, something Matchbox is doing, and it definitely has some play value, so um, it's it's still pretty cool. All right, so there's that. The We still have some Hot Wheels to look at. Let's do mystery models. So here's what the series contains. So a 55 Chevy, Viper, a Stingray, some fantasy castings, of course, Bone Shaker. That's a fan favorite, the Bone Shaker. So what do you think I got? What's your guesses? I got three cars. Which three are they? Yeah, yeah. One, two, and three. So let's just open them up. You know we're going to see all of them. And the first one is the 55 Chevy. This is really cool. Pineapple skull. I love the deco on this one. It's awesome. Looks great. Tampo's not quite lined up properly, I don't think, on this side. Or maybe, eh, I don't know. It looks a little weird on the bottom there. But I love it. That's really cool an awesome looking 55 Chevy and then we've got a sticker of course that goes with it uh, next up is the Viper I think this is the best um, Hot Wheels Viper casting uh, Beach Patrol definitely not the best deco for this car But it looks okay. There's your sticker. And then lastly, of course, we're going to see the vet, right? This thing open. And here is the vet. Ooh, that's a, actually a really good looking model. Bright orange. Striking. Hmm, interesting tampo. I think it looks pretty good, though. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. It's brightly colored orange. Wow. Of course, out of the three, this one's the winner. And I think it's like the, the chase car in quotes. It's supposed to be one per box, I think, is how you find those. But, yeah. Tampo's awesome on that one. The design's awesome on that one. That's really cool. All right, and then lastly, this old hat five-pack. I know it's old news. This car meet. Um, really, there's only two cars in here. Let me get this thing open. That I'm really excited about, and that would be, of course, the 510. This one's got the roll cage. It's the older tooling of it. The deco's really cool. I, it looks really awesome. I, I like that a lot. And then, of course, the BMW um, 2002, which is a great complement to the 510. Yeah, so both of those look really good. This is in a classic kind of BMW-looking color scheme. Um, and I think it looks quite good. It's got tan interior. It's a nice casting. It's probably my favorite BMW casting. And then we've got some cars that I really don't care too much about. Mustang. That looks okay. Coils Drift Team. So Julian Coils, right? 
There's that, and then uh, this Camaro car meet security car. This one's kind of lame. Brush guard in the front. Yeah, not a big fan of that casting. And then this Corvette looks okay. I don't think it looks as good as this one. But uh, it looks that looks decent, whatever. It's yellow. Yeah, so three cars I really don't care about. They might even get just given to my son. And then these two cars are the ones that I wanted out of the pack. Pretty awesome. All right, so that's going to be it for this episode. So not a bad one. We had some pretty cool stuff. Uh, always love adding Tomica Limited Vintage to the collection. And both of these cars are pretty nice. So those will go promptly on to display. Um, the oversteer was more of an experimental purchase, and it's not bad. I didn't really need it because, I mean, you got, when you have that in your collection, you don't really need to get this one. But if you're looking for a GTR that's nicely detailed, this one's a lot less expensive than the Tomica Limited Vintage, so go that route. And then uh, the Kyosho, of course, is pretty nice as well. So like having that in the collection. Uh, the Para 64, so first experience with that one. In summary, it looks okay. Kind of disappointing that I'm gonna have to glue in a part, but uh, I'm definitely gonna have to do that. I don't wanna lose that tail light. So we'll take care of that. Eh, overall impression though, I think it's pretty nice. Well, it'd be interesting to see what else they come up with. All right, and then of course, the Ultra Red there. It's a good add to the collection. All right. So thank you guys very much for watching. Have yourself a great day.